during the 80s, there was an explosion of talent in the Twin Cities, you know, and especially at the theater I was a part of, Penumbra Theater Company. You know, the most famous member who came out of there was August Wilson. But things were happening then in the 80s that was going to radically change the American theater in the 90s and the 21st century. You know, and I was around for the beginning of a lot of that, sitting around tables at Esteban's, talking about how we were going to all change the American theater. And then, you know, I guess actually did. <laughs> and in a way that it's not gone back. Um, so that's pretty much, I've, I've, I've been lucky. I'm not um, a university baby. I mean, I took acting in college, but that was just to meet girls. You know, um, I didn't really get into it until later. But at the time I got into it, it was like a perfect storm at Penumbra of Lou Bellamy starting the company and Claude Purdy was a director there and Horace Bond and then August comes through and, you know, it, it was really a vital time to where we made it or I made a choice that what I was going to pursue would be theater instead of film, which was my original reason for getting into theater because, you know, well, there's not a lot of movie roles for black actors in the Twin Cities. So I'll get seen as a theater actor, but there's something really magical about theater. You know, it's been around for a long time, you know, longer than Christianity. And that's for a reason. You know, we love to congregate in open or closed sp spaces and tell each other stories about ourselves. My, my first, you know, response to um, the email I got from, from Christopher was, kill a mockingbird? It's just that's done to death. And, you know, you know, Gregory Peck at Zadikus, and is there going to be another one? And, you know, why do I want to do that when there's so many new plays? about. Um, but it being Oregon Shakespeare Festival was a huge draw for me. So I was like, well, this is the first time I've gotten offered something from there. It might not happen again if I don't take this one. So I started convincing myself that it wasn't old. And I went and bought um, the book and reread it. And read it like in one night, like I did the very first time. And my reactions and all were like back when I was a kid and I read it. And then I turned on the TV after, <laughs> there it is on cable. Um, and so it's like, okay, okay, you don't have to hit me over a head with a brick. This is something I'm supposed to do. You know, I'm watching it and it's removing me like it did before. And I love theater that moves you. Whether it moves you to cry, moves you to laugh, moves you to depression. I want it to move you. You know, you come in, you should get a journey. You know, you come in ready to go on a journey. So it's my job to actually take you on that journey. And I, and I love audiences. You know, they're so fascinating. So that and the fact that, you know, Bill was running the place now. Like, I, I'd worked for Libby when she was at Indiana Rep. And I know she wanted to bring me out here, but back in those days, my soul kind of belonged to August Wilson. You know, if he had something going, that's where I was going to be. Um, so I never got the chance to work here while, while she was here. And then when uh, Leonard Bill was going to be taking it as she retired, I, oh, well, there goes my shot at Oregon Shakespeare, because I don't know. Him. But getting this uh, offer, and then actually being able to talk to him, as well, I mean, I was a huge fan of his work at Cornerstone. I thought it was some of the bravest theater going on in the country, and I also thought that's where the American theater needs to go. You know, it has got to be that connection with community, getting stronger and stronger. That was the one thing I said that, that I noticed when I was over in London with Jitney that I didn't feel when I come back here, is that everybody seemed to own the theater there. They went because that's what you do. 
you know, there's a tradition of it, you know, a ritual of it. And knowing that he was doing that, of course, especially that Romeo and Juliet he did in Mississippi. My daddy was from Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi is no joke. They call that no joke South. Where there's this new South and the South that's changed, Mississippi's still no joke South. <laughs> it's, so it was very brave to do that play the way he did it. And so he was somebody that I was going to want to meet and have dinner with, if nothing else. But, you know, all these things, you know, the popularity that the story has with me on a personal level, um, wanting to work here because everybody I've known that has worked here does nothing but praise it. They say, oh, you got to work there. Thanks. Uh, so all these things, and then talking to Bill, you know, it was like talking to a comrade, you know. So all of those things come together, and now that I've seen three productions here, I've been able to sit with the three different audiences, packed houses on a Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon. I'm really excited because I don't work for my next job. I work to connect with the audience. And this audience here, they're raring to go. <laughs>